Hi everyone, welcome you to our assembly. Um, I'm in my study today and uh, it's uh, having a bit of a problem with the lights. So hopefully you can see all right. I need you to be able to see the screen, but also uh, I hope you enjoy this assembly together as we, uh, we continue this theme of thankfulness this term. And today we're going to be looking at being thankful for creation and for everything around us. So uh, I'm on my own today, so I'm having to press all the buttons and everything else. So please bear with me if you can. Um, we begin our little assembly by lighting a candle. And uh, my hope is that um, your teacher or, or a support worker in your class or your bubble will be able to find a candle somewhere and, uh, and light that with you. I'm going to light our candle here. It just helps us to remind us that what we're doing is not, not just the talk, but actually celebrating the fact that Jesus is with us. And uh, as we light our candle, perhaps you'd like to share um, this little prayer with me if you can see the words. Lord Jesus, as we meet together today for worship, please be with us. Give us light, give us hope, give us peace, give us joy. Give us patience, help us to see, and to be thankful. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know how you look at this time of year. I love this time of year. I love all the colours, the way the leaves change colour. And I found a picture here of the leaves changing colour. I love the fact, I hope, even in, in difficult times, you have a chance to go out and you're able to put your Wellington boots on and kick the leaves and play in the leaves like they cut when they come down. And there's a picture over here of children playing in the leaves. And of course, being in living in this part of the world, we have the wonderful apples of Somerset, um, the orchard down uh, the, by the prayer garden here has all those apples. Um, and so we put some apples in the middle and that's what it's like in our part of the world. But I wonder what it's like in the part of the world where Jesus grew up. Um, it's a place called Israel. Uh, I've got a map here. Um, we live over here in a place called Great Britain. And uh, some of you may have been on holiday to France. Some of you may have been in, even on holiday to Italy, or to Greece, or even to Turkey. But Israel is right over here on the corner between Arabia and Africa. And it's a very different sort of part of the world. It's much hotter than it is here. And it's much more like if you've been to Greece or to Turkey or places like that, or one of the islands in the Mediterranean. And they grow very different crops. They do a lot of grapes. They do dates. Israel is one of the biggest providers in the world for dates. They do olives, from which they make olive oil. And strangely, they even do grapefruits. Um, they're one of the biggest providers of grapefruits. I don't know, grapefruits is one of those foods that some people love and some people really don't like at all. A bit like Marmite sometimes. So that's what they, they produce today. But I wonder what it was like in Jesus' day. Well, there's a place called Nazareth, which is where Jesus lived his early childhood. In fact, his name was Jesus of Nazareth. Um, Nazareth is right up in the top part of Israel. Here's Jerusalem in the centre down the bottom, but here's Nazareth right up in the top part overlooking the Sea of Galilee. And Nazareth is still there today. Um, it's now a much larger town than it was in Jesus' day. In Jesus' day it would have been about 200 people, so a very small little community, but now it's much bigger. And what's amazing is right in the middle of this modern day town, they've found an old plot of land and they've built something called Nazareth Village. And Nazareth Village is one of those reenactment villages. Um, we may have gone on school trips to, um, say, one of the Iron Age villages or, um, over in Wales or to a mining village and what that would have looked like. And there are people there who are dressed up in costume representing that time. There are buildings that come from that period. And we get an idea of what it must have been like to have lived at that point in time. And, that, and that I always found those great trips to go on, whether as a school or as a family or whatever. And there's one in Nazareth called Nazareth Village, which is, goes back to the times of Jesus. So here are 
people dressed in the sort of dress, your children dressed in the sort of dress that they would have had in those days. And here are some men going out into the field to do the work in, of, of harvesting. But I want to set you a little challenge. In a moment, we're going to look at a short video. And I want you to see, I want you to try and see how many things you can find to do with creation. I'm going to give you a couple of clues, uh, some very obvious ones, as you watch this short five minute video. You'll hopefully see a donkey. Donkeys are really important at the time of Jesus. Hopefully you'll see some sheep. Sheep are really important. And you might see some wonderful trees, like this one, dotted around the place. This is an olive tree, and it's from, olive tr from the olive tree that they get olive oil and use olive oil in cooking, but you also use it, um, in those days you didn't have electric light bulbs, and you made the olive oil was, was, was the fuel for their little lamps that they used to have all around the place. This particular tree is 400 years old. That's incredible, isn't it? 400 years old, because olive trees live, live a very, very long time. So what I want you to do is look at this short video. It comes from a couple who live in Nazareth and they send their videos out all over the world um, to people. The way in which we're gonna do it is, teachers, I've included the video as part of this PowerPoint, which will um, uh, I can send to you. I've also given you a separate link. So when, if you press pause on this, uh, recording now um, or close it down play the video um, with the separate link and then we'll gather back together for part B in a moment but I'd like you to look and see how many different things you could see in creation so here's the end of part A see you in a few seconds as you've seen this video bye for now So welcome back. Here is part B of our video and our assembly today. And I wondered what you did actually see as you saw, watched this short video about what it was like to live in the time of Jesus as he looked around his creation. Well, hopefully, as I say, you saw a donkey. Hopefully, as I mentioned before, you might have seen some sheep. Hopefully you meant, as I said, you also saw some olive trees. And hopefully you also saw a piece of ground where there was some like straw and they were tossing it in the air. This is how they made bread because in those days you couldn't go to a supermarket and buy a loaf of bread. You had to actually make it yourself by going out into the field, gathering the wheat, taking it back to what's known as a threshing floor. That's what this was when you threw, taking a fork, you threw the whole thing into the air and the grain would have fallen separate to the actual stalks and the other bits and bobs. And then you would have taken the wheat, ground it down and made it into flour and flour into bread. Incredible, isn't it? And that's what you had to do every day. That was the key part of the day was about making bread just to have something to eat. So that's the threshing floor and barley. You also have seen a kitchen where um, Mary would have done her cooking and there you would have seen, before we look at some of the food they ate, you would have seen something here called rosemary. And rosemary is a herb and rosemary um, smells. Maybe you've, had, you've, you've rubbed it in your fingers before now, maybe you've got some at home even. It was very useful both for cooking, but it was also really useful because they had no deodorant in those days. And so they used to make bags with rosemary in it to make things smell nice because otherwise, well, Israel's a very hot country and I leave the rest for you to work out. They also had some carrots. We can get carrots from the supermarket, but they would grow carrots. You saw that in the picture. You also saw some watermelon. Um, they're big providers of watermelon. Um, a great form of something to um, give you uh, overcome your thirst if you were struggling with a hot day. They also had pine nuts. Um, here you can see some fir cones 
um, because the pine nuts, again, like the rosemary, were both something that you would ground up and put into food, but also you would use in other ways too. And then there was a strange thing. If you remember when they moved through where the cooking took place, through to um, where the lady was doing the sewing and the weaving, then you saw something called pomegranates. You may not know what a pomegranate looks like. It looks something like this, like a red fruit. And what they did was the pomegranate, along, along with other things, actually you made into dye that would colour all the different cloths that you made by weaving. Incredible, isn't it? We just go to the clothes shop and the department store uh, or buy something which we like the look of online. But in those days, you had to actually make everything that you wore and you wanted to give it colour. So the way you had to do that was to get dyes and make dyes. You couldn't just buy them, you had to make them and one of the fruits they made it from was pomegranate seeds. So there's the lady weaving at the end. Incredible. I remember seeing her myself and she's so skilled at doing it. It makes it look so easy, but it's so difficult. So that's what we saw. And even if you didn't see all these things the first time, they were all there in the picture, a bit like a detective story as we watched that little video. And my point is this. Jesus grew up with all this because one of the things I love about Nazareth village um, and it's unique in the whole well the whole world is that it's not just planted in a field anywhere in Nazareth what happened was when they did some digging they found a very very early first century wine press which was comes from the time of Jesus and this wine press just looks like a hole in the ground but there would have been a big community event to have actually shared this time of gathering the grapes and making the wine. You actually trod them under your feet. Can you imagine that? Treading grapes under your feet. Probably sounds very weird, but actually it all folds, flowed into this bowl and then you would have brought your wine skin because you didn't have bottles, you had a skin, like a, a bag, and you would have brought that and you would have gathered your wine as a whole community. Because they found this, they then started digging further and they found that there were all these fields and the vineyard was all there underneath modern day car park. And then they found that there were the foundations of buildings. So what they then did was they found other records and built again what those buildings would have looked like. And finally, they found this first century synagogue. It's the only one in the world and it's a building just like that that actually Jesus gave one of his most powerful and important talks that has influenced our culture, our society for good, almost more than anything else. So it all took place in a building like this. Whether this was actually the synagogue, we're not quite sure, but it would have certainly looked like this. And they're pretty sure, given that Nazareth at the time of Jesus was only 200 people, that Jesus knew this place. Isn't that incredible? This was actually the place that many of these things would have taken place because Jesus was actually there. So that's what he could see. That's what he could see as he thanked God for the creation that was around him. What about us? As we go about our daily lives, going to and from school, out with mum and dad or whatever, how easy it is for us just to keep our heads down and think about many things, what we're going to have for tea, what we're going to play on our playstations or whatever. Do we ever really notice the wonderful, beautiful world around us? Because it's very hard to be thankful for something that you can't see. That's why I've focused our assembly on this. It's about seeing. Like when you do forest schools and things like that, you actually feel things in your hands and you do things working with creation. This is a beautiful thing to do. Maybe you, during this time of the, the lockdown and everything, you maybe started maybe doing a bit of gardening with, with your family or, or something. Maybe trying to grow something like sunflowers or tomatoes or, or whatever. These are great things to do because it helps us to feel connected. And we notice then that two sunflowers are totally different. We notice even if we help with preparing, say, the, the meal tonight and you have carrots, if you take two carrots and look at them, if you actually look at them, they're, they're actually different. Everything is unique and it's beautiful. And so we can be thankful. 
So as we bring this assembly to a close and we think about thankfulness today, all I can encourage you to do is to see. Jesus could see what was around in his community. We have some wonderful, beautiful things, especially at this time of year, all around us. And indeed, the most beautiful thing of all is also within you, who you are. Can you see the other person and can they see something of the beauty that is within you? So thank you ever so much for sharing. Um, we're going to close with a little prayer and then I'm also going to put up a link to a song. Here's our prayer. And if you'd like to share this prayer with me, then that would be lovely. Thankfulness. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. Amen. The song I'm going to put up for you is, um, and there'll be a separate link um, for the teachers to, to play this for you, is called Man Gave Names to All the Animals. It comes from an old Bob Dylan song. Um, some of the teachers may have heard of that person before. Big singer-songwriter in his day. But this is a particular version of it. And it's talking about how by noticing what an animal does, we gave names to each of the animals. It's a lovely song um, and it was really popular some years ago, but uh, I hope you enjoy. Have a good rest of the day. Thanks ever so much, everyone. God bless. See you soon. Bye now.